my name is Allison Epperson and I am a co-founder of CT Hope and also the com Chief Communications Officer. So CT Hope was created in 2016 after the death of Zach Easter who was my boyfriend on and off for about five years. Zach was a very charismatic incredibly nice compassionate person you know he was that popular guy he was the jock he loved sports he was very good at sports you know people wanted to be his friend incredibly charismatic and, and just really curious about the world and had a lot of ambition and goals and 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 wanted to do right by the people he loved but also himself um, and, and there were parts of that that remained in him to the end and and would still come out but CT really stripped him of a lot of a, a lot of his joy and hope and, and positivity. So CT Hope is really an organization that wants to spread awareness and support surrounding CT, chronic traumatic encephalopathy, but also traumatic brain injuries in general. A concussion is a mild traumatic brain injury and that it's something that you have to to take seriously and that CT can be caused by the subconcussive hits, not just the big ones. Tau protein really builds up in the brain with uh, when you have those big hits. The easiest way to kind of explain it is it kind of gunks up the brain and so it makes it, makes it impossible for the brain to properly function um, because the tau protein that's not supposed to be there is suddenly prevalent throughout the whole brain and it controls so many things, right? So the buildup of tau can cause uh, immense headaches that can cause dementia and short-term memory loss and, and lack of balance and um, blurry vision. So all of those sorts of thing, ailments can derive from this buildup of the tau protein in the brain that's not supposed to be there. People ask me and CT Hope in general all the time if we want football to go away or whether we hate football. And, and Zach was very clear that he didn't hate football. He wanted it to change. He wanted it to be safer. You know, really what we want as an organization is for people to play, but play safe. And, and for the organizations, you know, from little league, you know, youth football all the way to the NFL to take this seriously and do what needs to be done to protect the health of their athletes. Hi, my name is Ian Wald and I'm a soccer coach here at Nature Coast Technical High School. I've been a soccer coach here at Nature Coast for 13 years now. This is my 13th season. Uh, first game is next week. Hi, my name is Justin Early, information technology teacher at Nature Coast Technical High School, and I also work with our football team, working with JV Varsity and all of the audio video operations. The fact that there are athletics at any level, whether it's for kids to professionals, where you would care about the score on the scoreboard more than the person that's playing, is sickening, it is quite sickening. People are losing their lives and they're having degraded health uh, into the future. We're seeing that now with the NFL players and the studies coming out there. And that starts at a very young age, keeping them safe and taking brain injuries serious. It is not about the result on the, on the scoreboard, it's about the result with them as human beings. You know, soccer, because we don't wear a lot of padding, one would think that it isn't a contact sport, but it very much is a contact sport. And due to the physicality of it, there are a bunch of injuries. Most injuries occur below the waist, the soccer is mainly played below the waist, but the second highest rate of occurrence is definitely in the head. If it appears a student has suffered a sudden impact or injury to the head, the game is stopped and they are immediately evaluated uh, first and foremost by the coach and we take a course at the beginning of every season to make sure we're aware of the signs and symptoms for a concussion so we know what we are looking for. Any coach could tell you nowadays that there's a myriad of videos that we have to watch every year that deal with anything from heat stroke, uh, heat exhaustion, concussions, um, uh, first aid, AED, CPR, like I could go on with acronyms forever, but those are the things that they require of us as coaches to hopefully prevent these injuries. But it is a contact sport and at the end of the day, just like you can twist an ankle walking down the street, you can also get injured in football. I know that whenever we as a staff go through uh, a football game, we always err on the side precaution and we will uh, pull a student out or pull a kid out if we feel that they could have sustained any type of injury. Sometimes there is no sign. You just see the hit and you say it's safer to pull that student out uh, for their well-being as opposed to you know the game. And the state expects us number one to keep the kids safety most important of all and so uh, we always try to err on the side of caution when it comes to players and injuries in that case. 
I think students and athlete, young athletes really need to think about the long term rather than the short satisfaction of being on the field. And I know that's a hard decision to make, but I think it's important for those students to really open their eyes and, and, and open themselves up to learning about CTE and, and post-traumatic brain injury symptoms.